So whenever someone asks me for a budget camera recommendation, the one brand I always recommend is Sony because even in their budget models, they still have a high resolution sensor and top end specs. Now, Sony cameras are very specialized. So the right Sony camera will really depend on what you're planning on shooting with it. And sometimes two cameras can have very similar specs, but there's always one or two key features that completely change who the camera's for. So I've narrowed it down to three main cameras that I think are the best budget cameras from Sony. And I've tested each of these cameras out for myself for an extended period of time. So I'm positive there's something on this list that's right for you. Also, if you want the best pricing on all the amazing cameras we talk about today, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. So the sensor on most budget cameras are pretty similar, but that doesn't mean they produce the exact same image because it also depends on how the image is being processed by the camera and that has a huge role in quality. And it also depends on the physical design of the camera because that plays a huge role in usability and if the camera is actually better for video or photos and if it's a fun camera to use. And the A6400 is without a doubt one of the most budget-friendly cameras from Sony, but it's also a really easy and fun camera to use. The A6400 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor which might seem like a standard sensor, but like I said earlier, it also depends on how the camera processes it. And the A6400 sensor actually has a few tricks up its sleeve. The sensor in the A6400 is actually a back illuminated sensor, which means it's exceptional at high ISOs. And you can really see this when shooting in low light. And it's one of the best low light cameras you can get in a budget category. So if you're shooting a party, or if you're outside late at night, this is one of those cameras that's going to come in really handy. And it also has a built-in flash for photography. In terms of photos, it shoots at 10 frames per second, which is super fast. And this camera is good for anything from sit-down portraits to parties or if you're traveling. And the autofocus itself is super reliable in both photo mode and video mode. Plus, on top of that, the A6400 also has 14-bit RAW. So if you're someone that's a photography enthusiast, you can take those RAW files and really push them to their limit in Photoshop and Lightroom and even create professional looking work with this camera. In terms of video, it shoots at 24 and 30 frames per second with slow motion at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. And on top of that, it also has S-Log and cinema profiles. So if you're someone that wants to do any kind of color grading to your image and you really wanna make your images look cinematic, this is a camera that allows you to do that in both photo mode and video mode. And chances are, if you're a casual photographer or a video shooter, you probably won't care about these extra features, but it's nice to know you have that raw power available if you ever decide to get serious and if you ever sell this camera, it's simply going to be more valuable than a camera that doesn't have these features. Design-wise, the A6400 is pretty small. It's not much bigger than a compact camera and it's small enough to be your everyday carry camera. And on top of that, it also has a tilt screen built into the camera. However, this tilt screen only flips up to the top to see yourself, so it does not flip up to the side, which may or may not be a deal breaker depending on how you like your tilt screen. But one thing that I have to mention is that the electronic viewfinder on this camera is so good way better than any budget camera should be. And this is going to be really useful for hardcore photographers or people that like to use the electronic viewfinder when shooting photos. And the A6400 also has an input for an audio jack because the internal audio on the A6400 really isn't that great. And this is not a camera that you can easily vlog with without an external microphone. In terms of button layout and design, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect from a Sony camera. All the buttons are laid out in a really good ergonomic fashion. The menus are cumbersome there's like pages and pages of them but for the most part it's a really easy camera to use and you can pick it up in like an hour or two however one thing that i have to highlight is that the quality is top notch the body is actually made of aluminum and it also has weather sealing so this is a camera you can literally take anywhere with you and put it through anything you want and this camera will not let you down and on top of that everything from the buttons to the hinge feel really well made. It really feels like a pro camera in your hands. Overall, the A6400 is a phenomenal everyday casual camera that does have a little bit of extra horsepower so you can get really serious with this camera if you want to. And it comes at a really great price considering the high resolution and specs in this camera. But most people don't wanna become a camera expert. They simply wanna have fun while taking photos and videos. So Sony had this bright idea of making an ultra easy to use camera for people like us who just wanna have fun while shooting photos and videos. And that brings me to the Sony ZV-E10. Now Sony did this by making the Sony ZV-E10 
ultra minimal when it comes to body and design. It has one button to flip between photo, video, and slow motion, no complicated mode dial, and a one-click button for adding that blurry background effect in all of your photos and videos. On top of that, the ZV-10 also has a side articulating screen, which most people prefer. However, the ZV-10 does not have an electronic viewfinder, which some photographers might find disappointing. And it also has an input for external audio. However, the ZV-10 actually has a three capsule micro rig built into the camera that delivers really solid audio. This is a camera you can definitely vlog with and get great audio even without an external microphone. This way you keep your camera small and nimble without having to add a cumbersome microphone and it just makes it harder to travel with. Inside the ZV-10, you have a similar 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor and it shoots photos at 10 frames per second in 14-bit RAW. Just like the A6400, it's pretty similar in terms of image quality and photo quality. You're going to get 14-bit RAW that's going to let you really push your photos and videos and at 10 frames per second, you're going to be able to shoot anything and everything from portraits to parties to travel this camera opens up the world to you. Now the ZV-10 is newer than the A6400, so while it still has a very reliable autofocusing system, it is faster, it does a better job with face tracking, and overall, if autofocus is important to you, the ZV-10 and the A6400 are really similar, but the ZV-10 does have a better autofocusing system. In terms of video, the ZV-10 shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, just like the A6400, and shoots full HD slow motion at 60 and 120 frames per second, However, the ZV-10 also has a slow motion mode that you can flip over to just with that one click button at the top and this way the camera actually slows down your slow motion footage in camera making it less work for you to edit your photos, slow it down later on and if you're a casual user that doesn't want to use editing programs, this way you get that full slow motion clip right in camera that you can send to your phone. And just like the A6400, the ZV-10 also has cinema profiles and log profiles so you can really crank the colors in your video to attend if you want to. The ZV-10 is also made for more of a social media audience, so this is really a camera that I would look at if I plan to do any kind of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. This is really meant to be a creator and casual camera. Overall, the ZV-10 is one of the easiest cameras to use in any category, not just budget, and it also has a bunch of new tech in it that really makes your life a lot easier. If you're a casual user or someone that wants to do something on social media, this is a camera that I would definitely recommend over the A6400 just for the quality of life features like the side articulating screen and the built-in three array microphone. Now, if you're like me and you love the style of the Sony cameras, but you wish you could get something that was compact enough to fit in your pocket, without sacrificing anything in terms of quality for photo, video, and audio, there's actually a brand new camera, the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, which is newer than the A6400 and the ZV-10 with a lot of the same features, and in many ways, it's a better camera despite being a compact camera. In terms of design, it's actually a much smaller camera, so the lens in this camera is actually fixed and cannot be changed out, but it's an 18 to 50 millimeter lens with a variable aperture. The lens is wide enough so you can do any kind of vlogging and get really scenic wide shots on it, but you can still zoom in with this lens and get close-up portraits or just get zoom in close-up shots. However, this lens does have a variable aperture, so when you're shooting on the 18 millimeter side of this lens, it's phenomenal low light, but when you're shooting on the 50 millimeter side zoomed in, it's not very good in low light. But you've probably noticed the ZV-1 Mark II actually has the exact same button layout as the ZV-E10. It's one button to flip between photo, video, and slow motion, and it has a side articulating screen with an audio jack, but best of all, it also has that three microphone array built right into the camera, so you can use this as a vlogging camera. And because it's a newer camera, that microphone actually sounds a lot better than it did on the ZV-10, and on top of that, it has newer audio processing that actually cleans up your audio in camera. The side articulating screen is 100% touch enabled, so you can use that touch screen to enable autofocus, to change major camera settings, to flip through your menu. It's pretty much like using a smartphone. In terms of photos, it shoots with a smaller 20 megapixel one inch sensor, which does reduce photo and video quality compared to the A6400 and Sony ZV-10, which have a larger sensor, but if you're a casual user, I promise you, you will not see the difference. And one really cool feature in the ZV-10 is that it shoots photos at 24 frames per second. That is as fast as video frame rates. So you can shoot 24 frames per second with zero blackout. And with the amazing autofocus in the Sony cameras, it is impossible to miss your shot. This is probably the best street photography point-and-shoot camera I have ever seen. It just works so well. 
On top of that, it still has 14-bit RAW, so you can really take these photos into Lightroom or Photoshop and edit them to your heart's content. But like I said earlier, it is a smaller sensor which gathers less light, so you won't get the exact same amount of flexibility as you would get with the A6400 or the Sony ZV-10. In terms of video, it shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, along with HD slow motion at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. And just like the ZV-10, it has a dedicated slow motion mode, which slows down all of your video in camera so you don't need to do any extra editing. However, the coolest feature on the ZV-1 Mark II that no other Sony camera really has right now, especially on a budget, is cinematic vlog mode. This mode gives you cinematic colors and a cinematic widescreen aspect ratio, so pretty much you can get a cinematic look that you would actually have to spend real time adjusting your colors, making sure everything looked good in camera with two clicks. This is a great feature for anyone that wants to shoot casually, but you want your fork to look like those Instagram bangers and those cool YouTube videos you see. And if you're someone that's a new creator, someone that's just starting out with cameras, this is a great camera to pick up and with cinematic log mode, you can literally take the most basic video and crank it up to 10 with just two clicks. Considering the price of the ZV-1 Mark II and the specs and features you get with this camera, it's a really good deal. It's a budget powerhouse pocket camera in your pocket. And if you want to make sure you get the best possible pricing on your camera gear, make sure to check out the links in the description down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.